Um, and uh, I, I think um, that definitely goes for the stage as well. In the States, which I don't know here if you guys also have it at costume contests, we do something called the walk-on, where you just walk on stage and you show off your costume and you get judged for your craftsmanship, but you don't get judged, there's no skit or anything. So, um, a lot of people in the States, when they go on stage, they're like this. And it's like, they literally, they rush off before you can even take a good look at their costumes. And so, I recommend for people to, again, learn the three poses and take a breath between each pose and pose long enough that a photographer can take a clear picture of you. So, um, you know, because it's like you don't have to rush off the stage. It's like when you are on stage, you want to find that perfect balance between, you know, boring the audience and leaving the audience wanting more. You always want them to want to see a little more of you, but you want to give them a good look, give them a good taste. So, anybody would like to add anything? So, you have like multimedia, pop culture conventions, you have comic book conventions, you have anime conventions, and um, really a lot of them they can sound very exciting, they can sound really cool, but then the logistics of going to those cons is really a pain in the butt. So I'll recommend some cons to you that I think are very easy to attend, that are a lot of fun for cosplay. So whenever I see a skit where somebody goes into a monologue and talks about, oh, this character this, and that character did this, and this is why I'm here doing this, I'm like, you know, like, who are these other characters, you know, and why don't we see them? Uh, so I like characters in skits that are archetypes. So you have the hero, you have the villain, you have the damsel, you know, you have the, you know, assistant or the you know the sidekick so like when you have very defined types of characters in a skit then it makes the performance the overall performance a lot more um, relatable to everyone because truly what you want to do with the performance on stage is you want to create an emotion in the audience you want the audience to feel something so when they're able to understand the, what's going on on stage, then they are able to get into the characters, they're able to relate to the characters. So when you are planning to do a skit, think of characters that will translate well into archetypes, and think about a performance where you can tell a story, you know, within the two minute, three minute limit. Um, I, I, prefer watching skits that have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Instead of just, oh, I'm just reenacting a scene from the middle of this anime or this manga. Um, when you just re which, you know, there have been skits that have been successful and gotten awards with, you know, reenacting a scene or just taking like a little excerpt and doing something with it. But I think if you want to make an impact, if you want the big prize, if you want to possibly enter the WCS, then you really need a skit that is very coherent and that has you know, a very distinct beginning. And from choosing the character to choosing the performance, sometimes I think if you are challenged with, um, challenged with entering a contest as a single, you may have to choose the character based on what kind of performance you want to do. You know, I have entered contests before where I've thought about what kind of performance I wanted to do, I've thought about the person I was doing it with, and thought about like which character we would match, which ones we could cast each other as. And uh, you really have to think about it like a theatrical production. Um, and just, you know, really think outside the box. I've, I've seen people do, uh, for single contests, everything from doing like magic tricks to doing uh, singing or dancing performances or um, doing like some sort of a transformation. Uh, so it's, 
It's, it's not easy, I agree. And um, my suggestion, again, would be to go online and look through videos and watch videos from different conventions. I know, at least for the United States, you can go to acparadise.com and they have videos of all the different skits from the different U.S. conventions. So it's just, it's a lot of material that you can go through and uh, you can sort of get inspired by cosplaying. I think it's totally cool however you want to cosplay, what is important for you. I think the general message to send out to beginning cosplayers and people who haven't done very many skits is that it is about fun and it is about paying, paying homage to the characters. I think that should be the most important thing when you are entering a cosplay contest. You know, because the, the thing that should be the most important to us is that we love these characters, we love these costumes, we want to dress up as them and be in pain and uncomfortable and in these, you know, shoes that I've heard because it's worth it. It's worth it to be that character for a day. And so I think the awards, uh, it, it is, at least for me, it's always been better whenever I've competed to be prepared to lose. Like, I, I have to know that it's okay for me to lose and it's okay for me to try again next time. So, um, I never thought I would have my own company. I never thought I would, you know, be on a TV show about cosplay. I never thought cosplay could go as far as it has. So if I had in the past told myself, this is my limit, if I hit this age, I will stop cosplaying, or I will only, you know, I have to think about the future and think about this and that, then I think I would never have gone to where I am now, you know? So I try not to think about what the future will bring. Um, the only thing that I try to think about is how do I maintain my business? How do I maintain what I find is fun? What gives me joy and happiness? And how can I just, you know, balance everything? Because what gives me happiness is now my job. So it comes with deadlines, it comes with a lot of stress, it comes with, you know, fatigue, it comes with jet lag, and just, uh, you know, uh, there, there is a lot on my plate, but it also is something that I really have always loved to do. Like, I've been a manga and murdered since I was eight years old. So, um, my, my concern is not about the future or what I'll do when I'm older, my concern is how do I maintain my happiness level? And how do I maintain the balance between loving to make costumes for the costumes and then running a cosplay related business? And a lot of times I'm just like, I don't care what my fans want me to make. If I made everything they want me to make, I wouldn't wear clothing. I would just be naked all the time in like <laughs> tiny little body painted outfits. I'm like, so no, no, I'm not gonna make what you want me to make. Like you think I want, you know, like everybody's like, you should be Bayonetta, you should be this character, you should be that character. I was like, no, I'm going to cosplay who I want to. And uh, so I think that is very important, is to always hold on to your integrity no matter what. Like, reputation is whatever. Like, your integrity, the reason you cosplayed in the first place, hold on to that and really focus on that no matter where you go. So, And with that, I will say thank you so much for coming. Really